Greetings, dear ones. I am cry on a magnetic service. Oh, there would be those, and there always are, who would say, This is not possible. It will not be this way. It could not. God does not do it this way. And I would say to you, This is exactly how what you think God does it. Every scripture that has appeared in your planet. No matter how old or young or to be, has been, is, and will be given by a human being. All of the profundities that have shaped the world's religions forever have been delivered from simple humans to their own divinity, through their cellular structure in this way. Think about it. All of your scriptures were written by humans, enlightened with messages inspired by what you would call God. And so it is, you thought this room was warm to begin with. <laughs> Just wait. There's an entourage in here that it begins to push upon you. Starts in the back of the room, you know. Filters in here. Has been here on this 11th floor for some time. It has. On Thursday, something happened in here. Very late at night. The room started warming up. Entities started arriving. Some of whom you know. Three day preparation of the room so that all of you would fit <laughs> and all of you could be here to listen to the family. I know who you are. I know who you are. But that is not a fearful statement. I know who you are. Family member. In this room, there is only one who was a first timer on the planet. 
But oddly enough, that first timer is one of the first to accept the energy, fresh from somewhere else. It's not unusual, it's not uncommon. And that first timer is already on the path. The rest of you have come and gone and come and gone on this planet so many times. Old souls, we call you, even some of you Lemurians, and you know who you are. All gathered in one small place. Now let me involve someone else, and I've done this before. All of you know of the transcription being taken place at this moment. This transcription combined with the one that was taken last night will reach the eyes of many readers. And so, dear ones in this room, let us greet the readers, for they're reading this right now. Let them join you in this room. And there's going to be tens of thousands of them this particular message will be available for those on earth long after the vessel of the channel is gone and is home with me. The readers on the page, you see, we know who they are all through history. So, readers, we greet you and we say the words of today are for all of you. Listener, and reader, I'll address you now and I'll ask the question we've been asking so often. Why are you here? Why are your eyes on the page? Why are your ears in the chair? Perhaps you came for a healing. Oh, this would be a good place. Reader, are you listening? Listener, are you reading? <laughs> Have you accomplished it all? Or are there some things you're working on? Are you interested in all? In progressing through something that we have described as enlightenment. Enlightenment, ascension, many names. You want to be a lighthouse? Or not? Completely with free will, we give you this message. It's about free will. It's a basic message, it's a simple message, but it answers some of the questions yet again, all in one place, that many have been asking about enlightenment. So let me speak to you, all of you, reader, listener, and say to you, did you come for a healing? It's a common theme right here today, isn't it? Reader, what are you doing looking at this? There's something here for you. What's surging through your body, listener, that you'd like to alter tonight? Divinity now presses upon this room. There are guides that you don't know you have that are here. Perhaps you'd like to greet them. Maybe you'd like to begin feeling them, for they have permission to touch you. Some of you might even smell them. The ones you don't expect. I've told you of the system repeatedly, but you still don't understand it. You still don't believe it. Maybe you'll be touched tonight in a way that you will. We've told you that those you've loved and lost become part of your guide set for all of your life. Did you know that? Oh, this is the mysterious one. You, when you passed over the last time on the planet, became someone's guide who is still alive today. That means that you're playing a dual role on this planet. You think you're walking around singular. You look in the mirror and you see one face. Let me tell you something. You're in many places doing wonderful things on this planet. You're still with other people in your own karmic group as their guides. Did you know that? You say, how can that be? I don't, I don't feel that. Yes, you do. 
is responsible sometimes for what you call twin flames, soulmates, all manner of connections you feel with some people that you're not allied to, that you'll never be with, but you'll meet along the way and you'll say there's some connection, I don't know what it is. And you have no idea that what you share is a quantum bond. Perhaps you're even each other's guide. So complex is this, we don't intend to even begin to try to explain it. Except there'll come a day when you understand all of it. You know what you do? You come in prepared to help humanity. And you think you're alone. You think you're singular. You want to know why you're here? I'll tell you. Let me revisit it yet again. There was a time when you leaned into the wind of birth. When we were holding your hand and we were next to you, holding the back. You weren't in yet. It wasn't yet time. And we were questioning you. Are you sure you want to come? Do you really want to come into the earth? And you said yes. Look what's going on down there. There is the potential. There's the potential that we can change all of it. Did you understand? Did you ever realize? Did you ever think that maybe all of your past lives cumulatively were like classes you attended for the graduation? Would you ever have missed the graduation? That's why you're here. Everything you did all your lives, a ramp up to this. There you were leaning into the wind of birth. All of your magnificent selves. The interdimensionality of you glistens and sparkles. And what you would call the holographic parts spinning. The diamond within the diamond. Gorgeous. Surrounded by entities, we're going to come in with you. Like a little troop you are. The big one and all the small ones. You come in as a group. And you did. And in you came, and as you were dropping into that place that you call birth, you were talking to us as you came down. This is it, you said. This is the time I planned for. Doesn't matter what age I'll be, I'll be the perfect age. And I'll have free choice. I hope I see it. This time around, I hope I see it. I don't know how old I'll be when I see it, but I'll be the perfect age with free choice to find the mastery within, to become a lighthouse for the planet. And to make a difference. There isn't one here that didn't have that scenario. And you wonder why we love you the way we do. I paint a vivid picture, do I not, of the way it began. It's even more glorious than that. You can't imagine it. So blessed are you among beings in the universe. All of them, all connected to you, know your name. Oh, not the one you have now the real one the one we sing to you in light when we see you every time and so let us speak of that free choice and what you have before you and now we've got to climb into 3D with you for it is that intellectual mind that asks these questions about the non-intellectual interdimensional self the questions are all the same. They always are. Well, crying, we, we'd like to do this, but you know there isn't a whole lot of proof. Can you give us some proof that we ought to begin this journey. It's interesting. There is no real feedback, you know, in an interdimensional way because you are not yet interdimensional. When you come in in 3D, one of the first things you do is know how to eat. It's instinct. And you do. You know how to begin. You know when you're full. You know when you're too full. 
It doesn't seem to bother that you have to you have to eat every single day, even though you ate yesterday. Isn't that odd? And you always have a 3D feedback. You all know. What if there was a hunger as well that was interdimensional? And you are beginning to awaken to that because the veil is lifting. And what if it's like a spiritual hunger and you're asking, how do I start? Where is the food? What do I do? When am I full? When am I too full? And so we say to you, this is a very difficult thing. It's like the chicken and the egg. There is no interdimensional feedback until you become interdimensional. So the first question is, therefore, how do I begin? Where do I start? Is there proof? The only proof we offer before you is this. Why would you be here asking the question? Why are your eyes on the page? Is there indeed some kind of interdimensional spiritual hunger which visits you now? That says, is there more than I was told? Is there something else? Let that be the proof. And dear one, if you sit here or you read these words and there is no spiritual hunger, then put the book down. It's not for you. It's not time. It may never be time. It doesn't matter. Free choice. You are created with a duality that would ask the questions you're asking in all appropriateness. And if it doesn't ring true, then put it away. And in a moment, we'll tell you what will happen to you if you do. If you read on and hear it all, perhaps you'll smile a little when I tell you. Because you are my sister. And I know you. Brian, how do I start? The most difficult thing we've ever talked about. Find the food of spirituality which soothes you the most. Is it in the channeling? Is it in history? Would it be in the study of ancient religions and what they had to say about God? What would feed your hunger spiritually the most? Where do you begin? It's sometimes possible to sit all alone and say to spirit, dear spirit, with pure intent, I ask you to open the door and begin the process with me without reading anything, without studying any history, without opening a book or talking to anyone. There are so many different ways. They are individual just as you are and they will suit the consciousness you came in with. No right, no wrong. Just find the food. You're crying. How do, how do we start? What, what is it like? We've just given you a scenario of a beginning. Some of you have done this. Some of you have done this a long time ago. You're in the process of climbing the stairs of ascension. And we know who you are too. Healer. There's a linearity in the way things work in your three dimensions that cause an interesting practical problem. You open that door, you pray to God to begin the process, and then you sit there waiting for something to happen. Some of you complain it's not happening fast enough. You know, I opened the door, I've been sitting here a long time, nothing's happened at all. And you don't understand and you don't realize that you are God. What if I told you you were on the other side of the door as well as on the side you're on now? Now, if that's true and you're really a dual, a dual creature, that means that you help yourself open the door and then you start the work on yourself, don't you? Are you starting to get the picture? You don't sit around and wait for God to do something. You pick up the tools that are handed to you through the door by the angelic realm, through the veil, paste them upon yourself and start the work. That's how you start. You don't just sit around. Well, crying, how do I know if I have this? You know, when I eat food, I know when I'm full, but I don't know if I've even gotten it. I don't know how much to get. What do I do? <laughs> you don't understand.
There's a coat of many colors that has your name on it. And it's handed, it's, it's handed to you through the door. Here's your coat. It's the mantle of spirit. And when you take it, you don't have any trouble knowing what arm to put in first. And, and it fits you perfectly. And you know you've got it because it's there. And you feel it on you. And you're warm couldn't be a more perfect fit. See, it was, it was tailored for you for years. And you ask, when do you have it? How do you know? Why don't you just sit around and be loved? The answer is this. If you give pure intent for these things, you'll have them. Well, they may not be by your clock either. And they may not feel the way you think they ought to feel. You say, I've been meditating for a long time. I know what it feels like when you're in tune. You get in this position, you get in that position, you hold your mouth this way and you tune up and there you are. <laughs> We've told you the metaphor before. This radio station you've been tuning into is moving off. It's getting higher. The frequency is getting higher. You're going to have to spin that dial and find the new station every time you sit down to meditate. Now that's kind of difficult, isn't it? That's a lot of work, isn't it? I agree. So why don't you have it automatic? Why don't you get into a position that says, I am a divine creature of spirit. I'm in a position to tune into the station no matter where it is. I will sit here and it will come to me because I've got the light. And it will. All of this to say, dear human being, you don't have to ask the esoteric questions about how much, how many, when. It's going to be like the coat that fits perfectly. I hope I'm making myself clear. You'll know because you'll know. It's you with you. It's you with you. There have been those who said, I've got too much of this. I did all of these things and suddenly I've got too much. I can't sleep at night. It's interrupting my work. They've got to slow down. How do we slow it down? That's easy. Let me tell you something. When you open that door, that code is given to you, you're surrounded by an angelic realm. Brothers and sisters, you know and knew. All willing to go to work with you. Oh, I know this sounds simple and it's a metaphor, but it's the best we can do in 3D. We said we'd had to get in this box with you. So we're giving it to you in 3D. It's not like this, really. But if you say yes loud enough, there's going to be a whole lot of us pour in. And we'll push just as hard as you allow it to be pushed because we've been waiting a long time for you to open the door. <laughs> Ever since you were born, you know. And so the answer to that question, if you're receiving too much, guess who's in charge? You didn't even know. You are. All you have to do is say, go slower. Dear Spirit, I appreciate all of the attention. But I'd also appreciate it if you didn't have the disco ball in my bedroom. With all the angels dancing around while I was trying to sleep. Go slower. And we will. We will tune to you. And give it to you at the speed that is appropriate for your learning. For your attitude. For your sleep. You are in total and complete charge. There is this idea, yet again, that, that there's you and then there's God in the sky. And when you start pushing certain buttons, God in the sky is going to come down and do things with you, to you, for you. So you got to somehow control that. You don't. There's no God in the sky. There is divinity inside the cellular structure that wants to visit you called God. There's energies in Gaia that are God. The very air you breathe is interdimensional and it has life and it is called God. And 
the indigenous knew it and they tried to pass it on to these cultures that don't believe it there'll come a day when even science will prove it the earth is alive most of nature is too even the things you think are not like the air you breathe all coordinated for life on earth and a divine revelation through pure intent there would be those who say I'm really interested in this I like it I haven't read a whole lot but it sounds like I can have ascension if I do all of these things correctly that means that I can get out of here I can float away I don't have to be a human anymore I'll poof I'll, I'll do what Elijah did sounds good to me sign me up I'd like to do it and then I will say to you you forgot because of the duality and all appropriateness everything you planned for when you were leaning into the wind of birth and we were talking to you holding you back making sure you meant it have you ever heard the expression too spiritual to be any earthly good head in the clouds not a practical bone in your body <laughs> always with God never with your human friends does that make any sense to you no you're here to build a bridge called peace on earth you're here to hold a light it'll shine into dark places that need to see clearly with free choice that you give them through your light you're here to be an example and stand alone quite often on the most dangerous shores on the planet that's what you do you don't float away you don't poof in the night and become an ascended being that leaves the planet no it is more grand it is more glorious than it ever has been you you actually die to self and have a rebirth of sorts with your name and your body but with a brand new interdimensional countenance that's ascension and you walk from place to place with new tools people see your light and you don't have to evangelize it you don't have to give them any books all you have to do is have a light that is so bright that they'll fall in love with you and it's not that hard that's what you carry from place to place you know it's the love of God and what it does it, it does not invade anyone's space they see it and they say I want that because intuitively every cell in their body cries for the same thing given you so many parables about the way this works but you take care of yourself and all the other things fall into place crying I just want the good parts we've heard that we understand that there might be some some rocky things along the way oh yes let us be clear on this what will happen if you do this start shining a light in a dark place and you're with dark people they might not like you intuitively they would love to reach out for you but perhaps they're not ready yet and they're of an energy that is not going to be what you go to and maybe that's the one you're living with that's their free choice and that might be a rocky road are you ready for that what about your friends are they ready to accept you? Not if you get strange, <laughs> but if you turn on your light. And then there is this. I will tell you this. And we've said it before. Blessed are the humans who are not afraid. And you understand by striking a light and taking on the mantle that is thrust through the door, the coat of many colors. But when they put that on, the little ones will see them differently. Blessed are the children who will understand an enlightened mother, father, grandmother, grandfather. There will never be a better time with your kids than when you do this. They will not run from you. They will not shy away from you. 
for of all humanity on the earth, it is the little ones who will see your light first. Do not fear losing your family, not that part of it. It's difficult. Brian, I just want the good parts. Don't, I don't want those other parts. Isn't there a process where we can just go to the good stuff? <laughs> it's all good stuff. Your predetermined challenge is going to be negative. What if challenge is simply scrubbing the foundation so that you can build a new house? What if? It's like a woman asking, say, I don't like the pregnancy part and the delivery part of having children. I like the stork story a lot better. <laughs> it can't happen. That's mythology. You got to work for it. And that is the duality. Brian, what will happen if I don't do this? Let me give you an example, dear one. This is a beautiful story. And it's the next to the last thing we're going to give you in this channel. There will be those who would read these words or hear this message and say, this is not for me. I don't really believe it. But I'm concerned today he speaks of these things in a certain way. What will happen if I don't? I want to leave here and forget this meeting. I want to put down this book and forget I never read this. What's going to happen to me? Am I going to be punished? Will there be darkness in my life? Will things go poorly if I don't? Let me make this clear. There was a parable we gave you many, many years ago. It's been published. It's called The Parable of the Prodigal Son. And it goes like this. The father, which you see metaphorically as God, sends two sons into the world. This is being born on earth, two human beings. And the metaphor continues that one son becomes a minister and the other son becomes a hedonist. They both sow their own kinds of energies and their own kinds of seeds. One seems to do everything right, has a wonderful life. The other one seems to do everything wrong, has a miserable life. They both die. And then they come back home across the veil. And here is the information. You want to go read it again. They both got the same party when they returned. It's not about what you do. It's the test of free choice. It's about being here. God is not here to punish you. You're not running around the earth in a, in a rat maze. The test is when angels come to the planet and they don't know who they are. With free choice, what will they decide? And that then is applied to the very vibration of the planet and changes the planet itself. It's what happened before 1987, before the harmonic convergence. What is often called the 11 11 1992 celebration of this convergence the acknowledgement that the earth had changed its vibration and that humanity would never be the same the answer to the question what if you don't do it what will happen and the answer is nothing dear one i'm going to see you again and if you're one that leaves the room and makes no decision and no choice and doesn't want anything to do with this you're going to be welcomed back just as firmly as strongly as any other family member. Well then cry and why should I do it? it? Sounds like a lot of trouble. Why would you eat, dear human being? Because it's the sustenance of God. Those who choose this path will end up lasting longer with a sweeter life, without frustration, without drama. And as you solve the challenges of getting there little by little, it's going to clear and clear and clear until you will sit 
satisfied within yourself that indeed you carry the energy of spirit in your body around you and one of the most successful things you will find is that your personality will begin to change ever so slightly you see something happens when you put on that coat all of the ego that was you is forced into the pockets and then you button them oh it's still there it wants to get out too <laughs> but as you wrap your own hands around yourself and wear that coat your ego it stays put and people don't see the ego anymore they see the coat and the mantle of spirit did you come here for a healing did you now Let me tell you something right now, reader, listener. If you're one who says yes to this, I'm going to ask you right now, how about now? Oh, this would be a good time. They're all here, you know. They're all here, you know. And with this, we close. Blessed is the human being who has come here whose eyes are on this page who understand what is taking place in their body and the potentials thereof for right now we say this to you you can leave this place differently than you came but the seeds of the healing you came for be implanted upon you now so that when you rise from the chair whether you're listening or you're reading you'll be different what's troubling you are there challenges with your body that you do cannot control, you cannot seem to be a, get a grip on? Why not leave here with a complete new countenance with that? Why not have this the gift of today? What about the habit that's killing you? I know who's here. We want you to last a long time, light worker, warrior of the light. We want you to stay here in good health and last a long time. We've given you the tools right here for it. We've given you how to do it, how it works, what to look for, how to know you got it. You can, you can get control over all habits. No matter what the chemistry of your body says today to you, when you start this path of enlightenment, a whole troop comes in and helps you with it. It readjusts the chemistry so the addictions are gone. I know who's here. I know who's here. I also know who came for a healing. <laughs> and so we continue talking to you. Do you want it or not? Yes or no? Okay. Blessed is this human being who was given pure intent for the healing they came for. Let them never be the same when they leave this place. Let these meetings that have heretofore been channeling meetings become healing meetings and let there be changes in the cellular structure of all those in this room who give intent. For this is why they came. Not one came in fear. All of them came in expectation. And let that be solidified Amplified. Let the problems that you came in with stay on the floor when you leave. That is the message. It's always been the message. Crying, when are you going to give us some new stuff? Every time we hear you, it's all about the same things. Different words, different parables, different metaphors, different stories. It's always the same. I'll make a deal with you, human being. And here it is. When you fully implement what I've been giving you for 16 years, I'll move on to something new. It's about mastery. It's about magic. It goes out of the box of 3D thinking into the divine box that has no sides, no walls, and is filled with the love of God. And 
so it is.